guys, you're here with the Oni Onto Mic Club. I'm Daniela and this is Lewis, and we're here today with the world's beautiful place, and I am no longer afraid to die. You guys can go ahead and introduce yourselves. My name is Greg. <laughs> I'm Chris. I'm Dave. I'm Derek. My name is Steve. I'm Josh. Katie. My name is Julia. <laughs> we're missing Julia. So, so in the last couple of months, you guys have been touring with a lot of uh, really loved bands like Pity Sex Honor Baseball, Front Bottoms, and Brand New, which pretty much everybody loves. Um, how has how's it been? How's tour been? Have you had it? Great. Yeah. It's been it's fun. Cool. Busy, cool. but very fun. Cool games. Very cool games. <laughs> yeah. um, Brand New was really fun because. We thought that nobody would really care about us, and it was mostly true, but uh, it was still very, very awesome. Yeah. Were you guys received well for yeah. the most part on those shows? Better than we expected. Awesome. Were there any dates that went like really well? Were there some things Grand that Rapids was Yeah, Grand Rapids was Grand Rapids, Michigan was the best show of that tour. And what made it the best one? You know, just, just the crowd? Or? Yeah, the crowd was better. We, we, had a lot of we had a lot of friends there, too. Yeah. All right, so you guys released your debut record whenever, if ever, and it was hyped to be one of Top Shelf's biggest releases of the year, but the album leaked. So can you like talk about that experience for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was, uh, it's actually funny, it was the day before we were supposed to like, premiere the first song. Uh, I live with one of the guys that runs Top Shelf, uh, Kevin. And so we were like talking about like the song, we had had like a uh, song premiere set up the next day. And we had both like gotten home really late, we were like making like mac and cheese, I think. And I get a call from Derek being like, hey, so the record is on what CD? I think uh, only seven people have downloaded it. Is like, we, we have to get ready for this because it's over. Yeah. Uh, so basically that night you're like, okay, well this is going to happen. And we just, you know, got ready to put it on Bandcamp and all that kind of stuff because, you know, it's going to go everywhere. Actually, we, it was really fun the next day of me going on every social media outlet and anyone who had already downloaded it asking them kindly to not tell anyone about it. And it worked really good until about 6 p.m. that night when everyone goes on Tumblr and it's just over. So then we like, decided also, both us and we were like, well, we just need to like put this thing on uh, put this thing up ourselves because we don't want people to be getting like, a lesser quality version of it or whatever. It's better to be getting it from the source than, you know, whatever it is. It can come with like all the credits that people know who played on it and who recorded it and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it's just, you know, this, you kind of want to have to expect for it to happen. So Have you guys planned for like, because it happens with a lot of records, like did you guys expect that to happen or did you think it was a little? Yeah. Uh, I think we did, but it was honestly so, so much sooner than we probably expected. And honestly, it's like at least like two weeks in or whatever. It's like who gives a shit or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more stressful when you have a bunch of stuff like lined up for everything. It's like, okay, well, we have to change our plan entirely. It didn't hurt us at all, you know? Like, it's, you kind of, the thing, we all take this really seriously, so it's just you plan, try to plan as much as you can, but you also have to realize that everything can change in the second and like a second. So just be ready, you know. I think we're all best under pressure sometimes like we should do what you have to do. So And did, even with the leak you guys still landed on the Billboard two hundred and number three on vinyl, you know, on internet chart, rock chart. How did that feel to know that like despite the fact that it leaked, people still wanted to buy your music like, Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't feel bad. <laughs> we were in uh, Texas somewhere. Or it was Fort Worth. No, it was Albuquerque. No, it was, it was Texas. It was yeah. Texas. We stayed at the house. Yeah, we stayed at a house that looked like the Alamo. That dude gave us the headbangers ball. Yeah. Yeah. We went at some forty-one city. Oh, yeah. That's that didn't last that long. Was long. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know when that was. It was like, oh my god. So is it true you guys are back in the studio recording a new album? Sort of. Uh, we're recording. It's a uh, collaboration with a friend of ours named Chris Azania, who performs with us when he can. Uh, it'll be a mixture of uh, some spoken word pieces, some instrumental, some full-on song stuff. 
kind of interesting because some of the stuff we had worked on previously, and stuff, a lot of the stuff that we had on. We went to the studio and, okay, we're going to record this with stuff that had evolved out of our live shows, like songs that were, you know, at first just us kind of like, almost like uh, creating atmospheres between songs. And, you know, over the last like year and a half, two years, they developed into their own kind of little things. And then some of it was just, you know, started with a guitar part and like, oh, let's try to build this. This video was just kind of a fun exercise. So, so what would you say your influences were for any of that? For the new thing? Yeah. Um, LSD. <laughs> We're talking about, there is one in that uh, spiritualized a little bit. There's one that uh, sounds like uh, Alpha a little yeah. bit. So I don't know, you know, don't really go, you know. We talk a so, lot about do, make, say, think, and like, monotone stuff, but usually it's not like, oh, well, we want to do this. It's just, you know, okay. Well, there's some there's do, make, say, think moments on it. Yeah. It's so, never like super conscious, like. Oh, yeah, this. Yeah. this is actually an interesting one too because we didn't actually really write things at all before. <laughs> it's like, like I showed up on the third day of recording and all the guitar parts were done and I'd never heard any of the songs. <laughs> and that was what really a surprise songs. music. Like, we had a really good session. Like, what if this thing sucks? See, now it's stuff that you guys know about except it sucks. It's like, oh well. Yeah, if it sucks, it just won't. I think it's the guitar part you wrote like right there. Yeah. So I just put the mic on the guitar. And just yeah. Do it. There's a lot of just like, I don't know, I'll do this now. Yeah, that's fun. But it's cool, it's like we did, we had so many days booked, we're like sitting on our, around on tour right now, so we're going to spend some time listening to it. And it's nowhere close to done yet. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, I think it's going to be like a while uh, before it all come together, but you know, we've got a lot of different things we're hashing out right now, so. Um, previously you guys released a four-way split with Code Orange Kids, Self-Defense Family, and Tiger's Jaw, and that's a pretty broad range of sounds, what do you guys think of those kinds of um, out of the box mixed genre sort of releases? Fuck rules. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck a rule. It's more exciting to listen to. Yeah. 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 They're they're like all of our friends too, you know. Uh, so it wasn't like weird to us. It wasn't weird. Like it's, so it's fun. And it really is. It's a, it's a good split. Uh, it's, it's a I own it, and it's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the Code Orange Kid song sounds like a nightmare. It's, yeah. it's terrifying. It's so good. And how does that translate to tours? Do you, what do you think? Do you think makes genre tours would work out? With Sometimes for you guys, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah again, it's more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I only got like we were. But I mean, like, yeah. I mean like a full tour with a hardcore band would be it's probably a bad idea. Yeah. yeah so say, I yeah. wouldn't say so. Mm. That would be cool, actually. We had talked about we're gonna eventually do some stuff with Full of Hell, or like you know the exact opposite side of the spectrum yeah. of what we do. So. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's not, we all book like show where we're used to more so before we're like folks in this, we always book shows and like we talk about how, you know, a mixed bill is a better bill. I don't want to see the same band six times. Oh, yeah, that gets boring. Wacky shows are good. Yeah, wacky splits are good. So, and you guys prove that. So, so audience is full of extremely passionate and active musicians. Do you have any advice for them? Wait. <laughs> Best response I've ever heard. Drop out of school, definitely. <laughs> School's terrible. Did you hear that? You gotta go. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you learn. You learn a lot from drugs. Better than me. <laughs> wow. I mean, you can learn a lot from school, and as far as educating, like for playing music and things, but you also learn a lot from playing on your own too, and being in a band. Tripping acid. I mean, I went to school for around. So I went to school for music too, but I learned more playing drums in a band than probably playing 20th century compositions. I got my job, even though I was like going to school for it. I got my job out when I when I uh, stopped going to school for that major. Yeah. Uh, even like talking to uh, talking to someone who's a student here, let's have to show Jesse. He like told me he got like a. I always worry about anytime I talk to someone who's like, oh, I'm doing like music business stuff. Is really you get that kind of experience by actually being out there. Yeah. So I know he told me he like got a job, and I was like, oh, you were actually trying to like book bands and stuff before, and like that's how you make those connections and do that kind of stuff. There's only so much you can like learn from school, but also it's like if you're not having fun, there's like fucking no point of doing this kind of stuff. If you're not, if you don't enjoy like you know going out and meeting people. It's like fucking why do it? Because it can be a job, but it's really like you know you could go out. And do something else and probably have like 
a more consistent, easier life, we are all here because it's like this is actually what we fucking care about. And I feel like that's every, I would say the most honest, best bands are the bands who are like doing that kind of stuff. And they're the ones who are like, you know, no one is pushing them to do anything but themselves. So. Greg, why are you cussing so much? I don't know. Because <laughs> he's so passionate. He doesn't know how to talk like you. I want to oh, cuss. Yeah. I kind of zoned out. He was talking for a while. <laughs> Just well, it was a sweet sentiment to end on because I'm sure it'll translate into the set. I'm sure we'll see the passion in the set. So thanks for talking to us, and uh, thanks for watching.